Hi, this is the instruction video for the thermal protection device for the Dynastart. I'm Nick from FireEngines.com. So, this normally you would have the wire from the regulator going to DF. What this device does is it senses the heat from the body of the Dynastart and it disconnects that wire. So you have to fit it electrically in series with the wire and firmly enough to the Dynastart so that it will do the heat. Now there's two places to fit this. You can either use a screw on the back or the way I prefer to fit it is on the um, D- minus or earth screw and I've modified these specially so that that screw will still go in and uh, shouldn't break it. So basically remove that screw and uh, put it in. I should put it in loosely initially and then you can finalize the position it suits. You might have another wire from this terminal to the regulator earth. Doesn't matter, still goes on there. So what you would do is you'd have your eight millimeter spanner to undo these terminals. Um, I've just got them finger tight at the moment. Very important that these studs are not turning at all when you do this. If it's rusted, don't force the nut so that the stud turns because what you can't see is inside here on is the wires are sold to that stud so if you turn it 90 degrees you can break off the wiring of the coil so just check when you undo and do up those nuts that the studs aren't turning I've got brand new nuts on here and greased which is what you should do but if it's been neglected they'll be rusted solid in which case I would suggest that you you join on the wire if this can't be done or take the Dynastart off to your workshop and you can cut the old nuts off with a mini saw um, or use a bit of blowtorch heat carefully and uh, get them replaced that way. So anyway, you need your uh, wire going through here in series. So now instead of the original wire going on there, I have my wire and you see there's a nut and bolt end to this and that's so that you can reconnect your original um, forked end or DF cable and do that up nice and tight and I'm just doing it quickly here because it's a video let's do that up reasonably tight I'll be taking it off again in a minute when that's tight enough pull the rubber boot over it so that you can't accidentally earth this cable um, if you did it forces the Dynastart to, to charge fully so that's that's the situation you want to end up with. Um, I don't ship these with Dynastarts connected already because the weight of the Dynastart will probably smash and bend these in transit. So if I supply this, you'll get it loose and uh, you can fit it yourself. But that's it. So that will do is it will automatically disconnect the field wire so it stops the Dynastart heating up while it's charging. Um, because it stops the charging. You will get the red light come on on your instrument panel if you have one. So if you've got something like this, when this is operating, the red light should come on. But probably it'll only be a few minutes later. It'll sense the temperature goes down from a dangerous level to less than 120 centigrade. And it'll reconnect this and start charging, that light will go out, your battery voltage will go up. But the important thing here is that if you've got large batteries on a boat or very depleted ones, instead of this overheating and burning out, which could be very expensive, you've just got this small kit which protects you. So you don't have to change all of the wiring and batteries and stuff on your boat. You can just fit this and know that the interior coils um, aren't going to over heat through overcharging. Um, remember this is not an air ventilated unit, it's marinized so you don't have the salt going salt air going through the windings to cool them like you would on a car alternator. But the downside of that lack of ventilation is it's relying upon the steel in the body to radiate the heat and originally they're only designed to run at full charging power of about 10 amps for let's say 10-20 minutes. If you've got, instead of a small car battery for uh, an ancient vintage vehicle, if you've got two whopping great 100 amp hour batteries, or one which is in poor condition, 
it's going to take more than 10 or 20 minutes to charge that up isn't it so that's when you need this so if you've got a sort of 40 amp hour battery and that's it and it's not continuously run down i don't think you do but if you've got a more than that or a very hot engine space with no ventilation i'd recommend this okay